In this video, this is part two of glycolysis, and so we're going to be looking at the payoff phase of glycolysis. So this is reactions six through ten, where we're actually going to produce the ATP um, that, uh, that glycolysis produces. So by the end of this, what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to list the reactants and the products of this phase of glycolysis. I want you to be able to draw their structures and name the intermediates. I want you to list the names of the enzymes, track the carbons from glucose, identify the oxidized and the reduced states of NADH, and identify and describe the examples of substrate level phosphorylation. So here is reactions 6 through 10. This is together called the payoff phase because here we finally make enough ATP uh, where we're, we're netting ATP. So remember, in the preparatory phase, we spent two ATP. In the payoff phase, we are producing one, two, three, four ATP. So four minus two is our net two ATP. In addition, we are producing, we're using two NAD+, plus, these are electron carriers, to strip electrons from these molecules uh, to produce two NADH. Now those are potentially going to produce some ATP as well, depending on whether or not there is oxygen available, depending on what cell type we're looking at. We'll get to NADH a little bit later. So let's take a look. Remember that the preparatory phase ended with two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And we have, each of them are three carbon molecules. And so remember glucose is a six carbon molecule. So we've got two, three carbon molecules. One of the molecules comes from carbon one and two and three of uh, glucose. And the other molecule comes from carbon six and five and four from the glucose molecule. And at this point, at this stage here, what we're doing is we are oxidizing this glyceraldehyde three phosphate. And at the same time, we are phosphorylating it. So by oxidizing, that means we are stripping it of a couple of hydrogens and their associated electrons. Now, the two electrons and one of the hydrogen protons is going to be taken by NADH. The other proton is just released into the aqueous solution there. In addition, we add a phosphate group right to this carbon here. And there's our phosphate group. Here is something that's absolutely important to notice. The source of this phosphate group is not from ATP. It is a free-floating inorganic phosphate. So we did not spend an ATP to get this phosphate here. That's super important to know. Second, I want to remind you, we're talking about doing this reaction twice. Okay, so we took two phosphates and we added them to two glyceraldehyde three phosphates to make two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. In addition, we have two molecules of NADH. Okay, next. NADH stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And as you can see here, here's our dinucleotide. Here's one ribose. Here's a, another ribose. So here's one um, nucleotide. Here's the other nucleotide. And then here's nicotinamide. Here's the N+. Plus. And this N+, plus is going to take an electron from our food source, from the molecule that we are oxidizing, and it's going to take another electron and a proton here. Okay, so one electron goes here, and one electron and a proton goes here. That leaves, from the two hydrogen atoms that we've stolen from the food, that leaves one proton left, and that is what is going to just uh, go to contribute to the pH of the solution. 
So here we have the NADH in its reduced form. Here we have it in the oxidized form. Be sure that you can tell the difference. Now, notice, look, let's take a look at 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. It has two phosphate groups on it. The hydrolysis of this phosphate here has a delta G that is much more um, negative than the hydrolysis of ATP, which means, and we had talked about this before, that this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate can actually transfer its phosphate group to ADP, making ATP. And that's called substrate level phosphorylation. And that's exactly what happens in reaction number two. Each of our two 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate molecules are going to be used to phosphorylate ADP to make ATP. That happens for each one of those molecules, so that's two ATPs. Now, the, the enzyme that catalyzes this is a kinase. Okay, this is a reversible reaction, and um, it is catalyzed by a kinase. Kinases transfer phosphate groups to or from ATP. So it can go in either direction. It just depends upon the, the delta G of, the, of whatever reaction we're looking at. And so in this particular case here, we're going in the forward direction of transferring that phosphate from the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP whoops, to make ATP substrate level phosphorylation. We've just produced two ATP. We are now at a net production of ATP of zero. Minus two in the preparatory phase, plus two up to this point here. Now, in reaction number eight, what's going to happen with reaction number eight, reaction number nine, is we're going to prepare the molecule and uh, to get it to be able to then donate that other phosphate group to ADP. So the first step is we're simply moving that phosphate group from this carbon here, the, um, the three carbon, to the two carbon here. Now, when I say three carbon, two carbon, one carbon, that's just conventional naming of an organic molecule, right, through organic chemistry. But if we want to talk about the, um, the identity of the carbons with regards to where they came from in the glucose molecule, remember, this bottom one is the 1 or the 6 from glucose. This middle is the 2 or the 5 from glucose. And this carbon from the carboxyl group is from 3 or 4 from glucose. But simply describing it as an organic molecule and using your naming nomenclature, this is going to be the 3 this is the 2, and this is the 1. So basically what we're doing is we're turning this 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate. Again, let the names of these intermediates help you derive the structure. Very important. All right, so now we have our 2-phosphoglycerate, but this still isn't ready for substrate-level phosphorylation. The next reaction we're using something called an enolase. And an enolase is going to allow us to oxidize our alkane into an alkene. So what we're gonna be doing is we're moving a molecule of water, this OH, this hydroxyl group here, this H here. We're taking away those electrons from the hydrogens as well. And we're leaving behind this double bond, this carbon-carbon double bond. And so what we have is we're going from 2-phosphoglycerate to phosphoenolpyruvate. And now phosphoenolpyruvate is another really high energy molecule. It's delta G of the hydrolysis of that phosphate group is much more negative than that of ATP, and so it can be used to make ATP, to transfer the phosphate group to ADP to make ATP. And then sure enough, that's what happens. We're taking our phosphoenolpyruvate and converting it to pyruvate and generating ATP. And remember, again, all of these reactions in the payoff phase occur twice, so that means we're making two ATP. So remember, here's our phosphoenolpyruvate, and if we're talking about the carbons, the identity 
relative to glucose, this is our 1,6, our 2,5, our 4,3. Transferring this phosphate to ADP to make ATP and leaving behind pyruvate. Okay, so it's just a methyl group. We've got our carbonyl here and then a carboxyl. This is an irreversible, this is our third of three irreversible reactions catalyzed by pyruvate kinase, another kinase. So notice this, that kinases are used in both direction in glycolysis, in one direction to phosphorylate something using ATP, and in the other direction, uh, phosphorylating ADP to make ATP. Okay, so this is an, uh, our, our final example of substrate level phosphorylation. Also, this generates two ATP, and we are at a net of zero up until a few reactions ago, and now we are at a plus two. So by the end of glycolysis, this is what we have. We've taken the six carbons of glucose, and we've turned them into two pyruvate. Each of them are three carbons. Okay, so we haven't lost anything from CO2. Okay, we still have the six carbons, so we've got a lot of oxidizing to do still. We've taken uh, two ADP and two uh, inorganic phosphate. I don't have that written up here. And we've made two ATP. We've taken two oxidized NAD plus and we've made two NADH. Now those two NADH, depending upon the cell type, and we'll get into this, we may end up using those to make some more ATP in the mitochondria. Otherwise, if the cells don't use oxygen, we need a way to get more AD, NAD+. If we run out of NAD+, because we keep converting it to NADH, then we're going to have to halt glycolysis. So there has to be a way that we can recycle that NADH back to NAD+. And we'll look at that in the next video. So by the end of this video, make sure, well, and it's over here, so make sure that you can go back and watch it several times to be able to do the following, to be able to list the reactants and the products of this phase of glycolysis. Make sure you can draw the structures and name the structures of the intermediates. List the names of all the enzymes, track the carbons from glucose, identify the oxidizes versus the reduced state of NADH, and finally, identify and describe examples of substrate level phosphorylation.